Hi folks, it's Echip here, and uh, this is sort of an unusual video. Um, it might be important to discuss it, um, since we all should be headed to the polls pretty soon. And uh, Halloween will soon be upon us, so let's talk for a minute about vampires. Now these vampires are much scarier than the ones in our nightmares, because this group of monsters may have the capacity to actually take down an entire economy. And I'm talking about lawyers and so-called public servants. You've heard it said that lawyers are leeches and bloodsuckers and vampires and bottom feeders. There actually is a justification for this. It's not just name calling. It's because the legal profession, by and large, contributes little, if anything, to economic productivity and prosperity. It actually takes away money that could be used in our society for savings and investment. And it offers very little, if anything, toward uh, overall prosperity in return. Now, an attorney may hire some staff and provide a few jobs. He may even invest in some other things individually. But generally, the practice of law, the practice of politics, contributes very little, if anything, toward societal prosperity and wealth. And that's the way it is with many, you know, so-called industries that provide services only. I think of attorneys and the legal profession like a parachute that's opened up behind a funny car. It creates such a big drag on economic freedom and prosperity like nothing else can. And there actually is an economic term for this. It's called rent-seeking. Adam Smith, a philosopher and economist, argued that there are basically three ways to earn income. You can either earn it through profit or through wages or through rent. And to gain profit, usually an investment is necessary. That's for profit. You put money or resources at risk and you, you know, get a profit off of them. To earn wages, it's necessary to work for the wages. So there's an exchange of value. But rent income is, in a way, passive, and it's the easiest way to make money because it's the least risky and it requires the least amount of labor. All it requires is that you have a resource that you can charge people for. Well, having a law degree and passing the bar gives a lawyer just that resource. The practice of law in general diverts capital and resources away from productive uses and places them toward unproductive uses that contribute nothing to societal wealth overall. And in fact, they create higher prices and a further drag on the economy. There is now one lawyer for every 244 people in this country. Now compare that to teachers. There's one teacher for about every 435 people. How about plumbers? There is one plumber for every 756 people. We are overrun with lawyers in this country, and the drain on our economy because of them is incredible. The financial services industry I work in has been totally transformed in the past 30 years, mostly because of lawyers. Legal involvement is the number one driver of cost increases for customers in my industry. And I have watched costs for my particular product rise 300% in the past 20 years. How many other potentially productive things did not get done because of this? How much was lost in savings? How much was lost in investment? How much was lost in inflation? Now, do I think lawyers themselves are bottom feeders? Not necessarily. Many are fine people. But I think those who enter the legal and public service professions are largely either blind to or apathetic about the crippling effect their occupations have on our economy, on our society, and our overall happiness. Now, in the same way, lobbyists are rent seekers. Has anyone noticed that in the past 30 years or so, the number of ordinary professions requiring some kind of licensing or certification has grown incredibly. Does anyone wonder why that is? It's because lobbyists for particular industries 
get lawmakers and even non-elected appointed officials to pass laws, ordinances, and rules that require them. The argument is almost always that permits and certifications will improve the quality of the profession or will increase safety or something like that, and that is an absolute lie. Certification's real purpose is to deter other probably entrepreneurial-minded and possibly more talented individuals from entering the profession. It reduces competition. I mean, let's face it. Why else would you need a certification to become a florist or a taxi driver? Did you know that the cost of a single taxi driver permit, or they call it a medallion in New York, is $700,000. To get a permit to become a taxi driver, you need to spend $700,000 for a permit. Why? Because the taxi lobby, because politicians have it locked up where there's no competition allowed. Think about how much government has grown to create the departments and divisions that oversee these licenses and certifications. Now, do you think those departments are funded only by the certification fees and revenues themselves? Think again. So, why am I on this soapbox? Remember, those of us who want a homestead, who want to homeschool our kids, who want to grow our own food, who want to live off grid, and who want to conduct ourselves in ways that eschew government services, are vulnerable to these particular forms of lobbying and rent seeking. Living without municipal services, such as electricity and water, sewage, garbage disposal, no matter how sanitarily we're able to do it, even if it's superior to municipal services, is outlawed in most cities. You're not allowed to do it. In Oklahoma, for instance, a person can be fined by the electric utility for using off-grid solar. Now imagine that. You're fined by a private utility company for not using its city-sanctioned monopoly. Uh, people in Oklahoma can thank their current governor, Mary Fallon, who's a so-called conservative for that one. Imagine needing to hold a certification to educate your own children. Imagine needing to have a permit to dig a hole in your own land. Think about the costs of those permits and certifications, and think about how much they and other costs have increased, particularly since the 2008 economic crisis. Those of you who live in neighborhoods with homeowners associations, do you think you own your home and lot? Think again. If you happen to interpret the covenants differently than the board, the board can place a lien on and eventually take your home. And to think you fund them to exercise that power against you. Do you know who writes those covenants? Lawyers. I recently became aware of a high school coach who legally fought to keep his son, the team's quarterback, from suspension after the kid maliciously kicked an opposing player in the head during a game. Were I that kid's parent, I would have suspended him myself and done worse, even if they allowed him to play. But that's not how America works anymore. It seems we enlist lawyers and government to legitimize our despicable behavior or to become our own personal crusader. Somehow, we think if we have a lawyer or government on our side, we're in the right. But all we do in the end is cause the legal profession and the government to grow to the detriment of our larger society and economy. A profile of the membership of the current Congress, the 115th Congress, tells the whole story. Law and public service dominates all occupations as the declared professions of U.S. Senators and Congressmen. Currently, out of the 435 members of Congress, 168 of them listed law as their profession, and 194 stated their occupation as public service or politics. That means 83% of the U.S. House of Representatives 
have made a living from government or the legal profession. Out of 100 U.S. senators, 94 senators listed either legal or public service and politics as their profession. So why is this important? <laughs> it was not obvious. It's because Congress has the power to affect change in favor of attorneys and politicians. Well, we all know this. So why do we keep sending lawyers, professional public servants, and politicians back to Congress? It doesn't matter what their party affiliation is anymore. Those differences are minor. Do we think our lobbyists are going to be more effective than theirs? All lobbying ends up the same way. One group profits to the detriment of others. It's better for everyone in our country to enjoy freedom than for one small group to get its own way through the lobby. It's better for everyone to live and let live than to use government as our power broker to fulfill our pet desires. As well-meaning as government servants and attorneys are, they are either ignorant as to the economic damage they're causing to our country or just don't care. And it's time that we all care about the greater good to society rather than for some to use the legal profession and government either as a bludgeon to enforce conformity to our views or as a tool for personal enrichment and to stifle competition. The number one thing America needs right now is a renewed sense of freedom. Real freedom. Not political freedom necessarily, but freedom from our present government intrusion into every single area of our lives. Do you think you're free? A quote I recently read is that Americans are nothing more now than free-range humans on a government tax farm, and I believe it. Government's number one goal is not to serve the public. Government's number one role is to grow and take over everything. It appears to be succeeding. The Founding Fathers were worried about this very thing, and they wrote about it in the Federalist Papers. But we're now under a heavier government than the colonies were at the time of the Revolution. Don't let government take over. Get up. If you love your country, fight for your freedom above all. Whomever you vote for this November, vote for personal freedom. Freedom from government intrusion at all levels. Freedom from excessive taxation. And freedom for everybody. Thanks a lot. Have a happy Halloween.